Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle and I have brought out all of my orc models. And it really doesn't look like much. And it sort of isn't much, but it is my orc army and I love it. This army has never actually seen play in a game of Warhammer 40,000. Even though I've been collecting it since the very beginning. The problem was that I didn't like my color schemes. I never really had a good concept for the army. I wasn't very good at painting back then. All of these sorts of things meant that I would buy a couple of orc units, paint a couple of orc units, lose interest in those orc units, sometimes strip the paint off of those orc units, get rid of the orc units. And it never, it was just like a weird cycle of I might collect an orc army. <laughs> but in 2015, I saw the movie Mad Max Fury Road, the greatest movie ever made. And I decided I am going to theme my orcs around Mad Max Fury Road. And that is what I have done. And now I absolutely love this army. And I've also decided on a few more things to make this army really, really unique. Every time I paint an orc, any orc, a knob, a Gretchen, a boy, I pick two random green paints for my collection. One of them to be the base coat and one of them to be a highlight. And then I paint up the orc using those colors and it gives every single orc a very slightly different complexion. Sometimes I end up with a very, very neon orc. I mean, I think this Gretchen is the ultimate neon Gretchen. <laughs> and sometimes I end up with models that are really, really brownish or really, really gray. And I just like that every single orc is slightly unique. I feel like if the orcs really were a species in the galaxy, every single one of them would be slightly unique because I mean, that's how all animals are. And it just doesn't make sense that every single orc is an identical ball of green mushroom angry energy coming at you. Um, also, I so I, I do my own unique green on every single orc and then I do white shirts, black pants, just like the war boys from Mad Max Fury Road. Right now, I only have 30 boys done and I, that might be it. I haven't decided yet. I'm probably going to need 60. I think 60 boys is like the minimum number required for an orc army, but I think I might actually build the next 30 as shooter boys and I might have them all be shirtless because I have a bunch of shirtless orc torsos, uh, I believe from a company called Spellcrow. And so I think I might do the next 30 shooter and just have it be not WYSIWYG, have it be like, yeah, by the way, all of my boys for this game are shooter or all of the boys for this game are, are slugger because it's just silly, especially for orcs. It's really silly to be a real shtickler for, um, for WYSIWYG accuracy, especially when every single orc weapon looks different. Like this guy has got like a weird pistol and chain. And then this guy has got almost like a flamethrower looking pistol and a chain. And then this guy has got a chain ax with like a chainsaw on a handle and kind of a little bit more of a bolter looking pistol. So if every orc is going to look slightly different, you might as well just make the models that look the coolest and with let WYSIWYG just kind of fall to the wayside. At least that's what I think. So yeah, I need a lot more boys. I actually own a bunch more knob models that I need to put together in paint. I really like the knobs. Back in 6th edition Warhammer, it was all about the power claw. You wouldn't even look at the choppa or the big choppa. But now actually uh, having decent damage, low cost weapons is really, really nice. So I actually have choppas and big choppas on most of my orc knobs. And that's probably what I'll do for all of them in my army. Ooh, except for this guy has a power flaw because he's going to be a boy knob. Pro tip for orc players, don't build the knob from the boys kit. I mean, I guess there's two boys kits now. There is the monopose one that comes in the combat patrol, which comes with a very, very nice looking orc knob or the classic old school like second edition of Warhammer Orc Boys plastic kit that you can, it does come with the parts to build a knob and it is the weeniest, most piddliest, tiniest little knob. It looks terrible. If you want, if you want a knob, use a real knob from the knob kit. Knob. I've got my knobs. I got my boys. Uh, an inter a weird addition is this model is Captain Badruck. It's Captain Badruck's miniature, but I have actually 
kit bashed, done some some slight kit bashing uh, instead of holding or instead of holding his kind of um, his rapier, not a rapier. It's the uh, it's like a pirate sword, like a swashbuckling one of those swords. But I replaced it with a double ended um, chain axe. And then I replaced his face with like a mean, ugly spell crow face. And so I consider this guy kind of like the bullet farmer from Mad Max Fury Road. Maybe he's the teeth farmer because he has a giant little bin of teeth that he has just knocked over just to show that he is an absolute baller in orc society. I really, really like how this model turned out. I did a bunch of different techniques and I really, really like it. Although it is not the, it is not technically the HQ of this force. I think I, in, in Mad Max Fury Road, there is Immortan Joe, and then there's also the Bullet Farmer and the People Eater. And so that's three characters. And so I think I'm actually going to build all three characters as war bosses for this army. And then depending on how I want to run the army that day, I can pick my war boss. So this guy is going to, going to kind of be like a, um, a shooty war boss. Uh, I probably also run this guy with a uh, an, an orc knob with shock attack run. And then I have got my Cult of Speed war boss, Immortan Joe, represented as the classic Forge World orc war boss on bike. And then for the People Eater, I might do an orc war boss in mega armor. Ooh, because that would give me a really fun reason to add a whole bunch of the new, um, the beast naga orcs. So maybe the beast nagas would be led by the people eater. Ah, Immortan Joe. Although really, I think the first 50 games I'm going to play with this army are all going to feature Immortan Joe. Although I'm going to have to use, I can either, I can do two things. I can either use the legacy rules for an orc war boss on bike, because technically it's, I don't get how it works, but the rules for orc war boss on bike are in legends, which means that the art, the rules have been written and that they're not going to receive updates. Even though Forge World sells this model, you can go onto a website that looks like Games Workshop and buy this miniature. I guess technically Games Workshop doesn't sell this miniature and so it doesn't sell the model, the rules for this model. I don't understand Forge World. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, either stop having Forge World exist or just treat them like the same company because they make models for the same game. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I don't think Games Workshop gets it. But I have one. I have an orc war boss on a bike who is my Immortan Joe. The basing scheme for this army is all based around Mad Max Fury Road. It is a bright, saturated yellow desert, and I really, really like it. I think it's really, really striking, and it's going to give me lots of great, great tools for making interesting basing when it comes to some of the larger units. Because right now, Right now, this is barely anything. I mean, I only have 10 Gretchen. I'm going to need at least, what, 100 for a, the, the proper number of Gretchen for an army, which I can't wait for because these guys were so much fun to paint up. But the biggest thing I have planned for this army is... I have one of these, an orc battle wagon. This is actually an empty box for another one I have, but... I have one of these brand new in the cellophane, ready to rock and roll, but I don't just want to add a battle wagon. Although battle wagons are excellent in uh, ninth edition. I really, really want to get the kill rig. The kill rig is this big monstrous vehicle with a whole bunch of orcs hanging off the side of it. And it's being dragged forward by a squig, a sore. I mean, it looks like a pig. And so I want to replace that pig with the front cabin of the battle wagon. And that is going to be uh, in Mad Max Fury Road. There's this vehicle that the doof warrior is riding. He's this flamethrower guitar playing guy. And on the back of it is a whole bunch of orcs beating drums. And there's tons and tons of microphones and speakers all blasting out music. And so I want to build that model out of a battle wagon and a kill rig. I mean, kill rig, it almost sounds like a thing from Mad Max. And so that I'm planning on being one of the massive, huge, amazing centerpiece models for this army. I don't know, maybe even once this army is a beautiful, sprawling metropolis of Mad Max orcs, it's time to add a stampa to this force. And maybe I can build 
the the uh, Furiosa's vehicle. Ah, oh, did it have a name? I don't remember if it had a name or not, but it was this humongous tanker truck that had um, like two like dozer arms that came down in the front. It was an amazing vehicle. And maybe I could build that model in a, in a sort of similar way to the Stampa. It would sort of be instead of kind of tall and squat, it would be a little bit wide and short. But I think that would be another really, really thing to really tie this army into Mad Max Fury Road. And the reason it's Mad Max Fury Road is bikes. I think I forgot to mention that. I love bikes. Orc bikes are my absolute favorite model in all of the orcs. Um, right now, I only have like 12 painted. I have, I think, another 20 sitting around unpainted. Every single one is kit bashed to perfection. The Orc Biker Kit is a really, really good kit. It's not that new. It's actually a little bit of an older kit, but it, it works really, really well. The weird thing about it is if you use if you just build it as per the instructions, the orc head sits like directly on the handlebars and it's kind of awkward. So what I like to do is I actually cut the neck off of the torso and then I glue their heads up a little taller. And I think that that really, really helps these orc bikers look a little bit more impressive and imposing. But yeah, eventually this is going to be one humongous pile of bikes all just driving forward, led by Immortan Joe, with a whole bunch of knobs being led by the People Eater, and tons and tons of boys being led by the not Captain Badrock, the Bullet Farmer. Ooh, maybe I need to get a bunch of Ludas. What would be, ooh, Ludas and Flash Gits. Just a whole bunch of gun-toting guys to be led by the Bullet Farmer. That would be super cool. Uh, the orc, the orcs are my smallest army right now. In a way, that's technically a lie, but the orcs are my smallest real army that's a proper collection of things. And I am very, very excited to expand it and keep it going and build some beautiful centerpieces and just paint a lot, a lot, a lot more green boys. And speaking of a lot of things, you know what else has a lot of things? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have tons of super cool terrains, both miniatures and STLs to populate your wargaming tables. If you sign up, there's a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we critique viewers' models and give them some helpful hints on how to improve. And we also have merch. Link in the description. Ah, the Mad Max orcs, the two most perfect things, orcs and Mad Max, shoved together into perfection. I absolutely love this army and I can't wait to get the rest of the bikes all painted up because they are on big honking 75 millimeter bases. So all 30 of them painted up are probably going to take up a massive chunk of table and I cannot wait for that day. Thanks for watching.